inflection points or not. So of course we have to find the first derivative. It's a product rule. So first function prime is 1 times natural log x plus the first times the second function prime. When we simplify this, we get 1. And then we have to find the second derivative, which is 1 over x. But this is never 0. And if it's never 0, it means that the function cannot have any inflection points. You don't have to study the sign. There is no need for anything. So there are no inflection points. Good. I would like now to um, make up a function, and then we choose uh, the next one that you like uh, to choose. So here's, here's one function. Um, x minus 1 divided by uh, x squared minus 1. So we are asked to do everything and graph. So go through those infinite number of steps show everything, and uh, eventually graph the function. OK. So I don't have enough room here. I'm, I'm almost sure. I don't want to squeeze it in. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't for the table. So I'm going to start the table right away. So remember, we said from the very beginning of the class, we don't try, to, we don't want to jump into conclusions or start something before we investigate and simplify and analyze. So what do you suggest we should do first before we even? So the first step is here. This is our first step. Fill this in completely with everything, starting with the domain and so on and so forth. Then move here then move here. So what do you think we should do first for this function? Find its domain? Yes. But then even more, before finding the domain, yes. Yes, that's our first important step. But what do I have to do even before, or if you want help, to help me find the domain, what should I do? Like categorize the function. So what do we, in order to find the domain, when we look at this function, what would be the first step? Find where the um, denominator is equal to zero. Right. But we normally try to factor everything. So factor and simplify are the keywords in any math level. So in order to find the domain, I have to factor the denominator. In order to simplify, I have to factor the denominator. So that would be the first step, no matter what. So how do I factor the denominator? x minus 1, x plus 1. Good. So now we do know the domain of this function. What is the domain? Can anyone tell us the domain of this function? Negative infinity to negative 1. Yes. Union negative 1. Union 1 to infinity. Yes. In other words, x cannot be plus or minus 1. Awesome. Now let's look at the function and analyze and conclude what the next step should be. What is the next step? When we analyze the function, what do we conclude? by simply looking at the function. What is our next step? Uh, prime? We are looking at the function. Let's look at the function intensely and decide what to do. We're not discussing the first derivative. 
because we haven't filled out this line. We can discuss the first derivative after we fill this out. And we don't have anything here yet. Find it zeros. So let's look at the function again. Simplify and uh, take out x minus 1 and x minus 1. So the simplified form of this function is, so please remember these are the keywords always. So the function is basically f of x equals x plus 1 to negative 1. We may need this, we may need this, but at least we have both there. Good. Notice we discussed the situation before, so let's analyze it again. The factor that goes away becomes a hole in the graph. So x equals 1 is a hole in the graph, and I will make myself a note right here. Everything has to be in the table, so I don't have to go through five pages of work. That would be silly. So I know that this is a hole. The factor that stays, this must be a vertical asymptote, mandatory, because the factor doesn't go away. The factor that goes away becomes a hole. Good. So now I have to find the x and y intercepts. We are discussing this function now. Not this anymore. Okay? So can you plug in 0 and tell me what we get? <coughs> 1. Excellent. Can anyone give us the uh, limits here? Limit of 1 over x plus 1 when x approaches infinity and when x approaches negative infinity. Can anyone give us this? Zero. Yes, absolutely. 1 divided by infinity is 0. I make myself a note. y equals 0, horizontal asymptote. I made myself this note. I made myself this note. Perfect. What's a hole? Ah, thank you. No worries. Good. So now we have to determine these. And then the table, the, the line for f of x is done. But I need to determine this, and this, and this, and this. So the limit from the left of negative 1, the limit from the right of negative 1, the limit from the left of 1, and the limit from the right of 1. Good. So then, limit, as x approaches negative 1 from the left, limit, Sx approaches negative 1 from the right. Limit Sx approaches 1 from the left. And limit Sx approaches 1 from the right. Remember, we cannot continue before we plug it in. Do not jump to any conclusions before you plug it in and you state what you find initially. What do we find initially here? Zero. Yes. You remember 1 over 0 has three options. Infinity, negative infinity, or DNE. So what is the answer for this one? Negative infinity. Thank you. So I go back to my table right away put it in. I'm here now. What do we get initially? One over zero. One over zero. What do we get as the final answer? Infinity. Care careful. Very good. Awesome. So I put it in. As expected, they have to be infinities. I didn't know the sign, but they have to be infinities. Good. Now, what do we get here initially? That's one half. Excellent. That's it. There's nothing else. Only now I can say this is done. I found all necessary limits. I found the x and y intercepts. The numerator cannot be zero. So there is no x intercept. So I, I finished. This is complete. Only now I move on to the first derivative.
So the function is um, x plus 1 to negative 1. Can anyone give us the first derivative? Negative parentheses x plus 1 to the negative 2. Times the inner function prime, but it would be 1. Exactly. So f prime of x is negative 1 over x plus 1 squared. What type of number is 1 over x plus 1 squared forever? Positive. Yes. But look at this. So what is the sign? Because there is no critical number. The function is not defined at negative 1 anyway. So you can say, but what about f prime being undefined? Yes, at negative 1. But the function is not defined, so it cannot be a critical number. So what will be the sign of the first derivative forever? Negative. Excellent. Awesome. Now, the moment of truth. This is the moment I catch my mistakes. This is when I say, oops, and go back to the drawing board. That's why this is so important. I, don't, I, I will not wait till the second derivative. Okay, so from 0 to negative infinity, yeah, that's okay. That's true. From infinity to 1, yes, that's okay. From 1 to 1 half, yes, that's okay, decreasing. From 1 half to 0, yes, that's okay. Everything appears to work well. Only now, I move on to the second derivative. And I want to use this to determine the second derivative. Can anyone differentiate this for us? Two. Yes. X plus one to the negative third times the inner function prime, which is 1. Okay, perfect. So this is 2 over x plus 1 cubed. Notice that I cannot say about x plus 1 cubed what I said about x plus 1 squared. It would not be true. x plus 1 squared is always positive, but x plus 1 cubed is not. So although this is never 0, it could be positive or negative. So. Here is how I realize what I need to do so much easier. I replace this, at least in my mind, by this. And I know that this is positive. So I only have to worry about an extra factor of x plus 1. This is positive. This is positive. Nobody cares about this because they will not change the sign. This will change the sign. To the left of negative 1, what is the sign? What is the sign of the second derivative to the left of negative 1? And what is the sign to the right of negative 1? Negative to the left. Yes, of course. There is no symmetry for such a function. There is no function that has a vertical asymptote at negative 1 and a hole at 1 that could be symmetric. So I would say, not symmetric, so my professor knows that I verified. Because if it is, then I, I lose points. But there is, it, it cannot be. If it has a vertical asymptote at negative 1 and a hole at 1, there is no way. Now my table is com complete. I don't care about any of this. This becomes gibberish now. That's all I care about this and nothing else. This will help me graph the function. So I start by plotting the points. I only have 0, 1. So let me use a different color. So I only have 0, 1. Of course the vertical asymptote. Do not graph it as a solid line. It's not a solid line. And 1, 1 half show and make sure that you show the whole. Also, I have a horizontal asymptote, but it's this. So it's an overkill. I don't have to graph it again. It's the x-axis. At this point, remember what we do.
the function is coming from zero, decreasing, opening down to negative infinity. Easy. From zero, decreasing to negative infinity, opening down to the left hand side of the vertical asymptote. Now, the function is decreasing, coming from positive infinity, crossing the x axis at 1, 0. Continue to decrease, still opening down, going through the hole. Continue to decrease, still opening up towards zero. Again, I cannot emphasize enough. From all this, nobody can graph. Summarizing the information and making sense of the information or the pieces of information you put in is what helps you graph the function. Everything I have in here is in here. And now I will write that this is the graph of f of x of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. It was possible because I had everything summarized and I went from left to right step by step. It tells me to decrease, it tells me opening down, it tells me where it's coming, it tells me where it's crossing, it tells me where the hole is, where the vertical asymptote opening up continuing to open up, still decreasing towards zero, and all the information is there. Any questions? Any questions? It needs a lot of practice. Yes, it looks very easy. I have a question. Yes, please do. Question. Go ahead. Um, yes, please. Just a question. Um, the limit. Um, why it was applied? What limit? Um, like what? What? Why was it applied to find? Uh, the limit as x approaches infinity went over. It's mandatory. Over. These are the uh, the horizontal asymptotes. We have to do this. We did that on uh, on the on the polynomial as well, unless we were given a, a fixed domain. We always have to look at uh, where the function is going. If the domain has negative infinity to infinity, I have to find the limits. If it has vertical asymptotes, as we discussed a long time ago, if it has vertical asymptotes, I have to find the limits. If it has holes, I have to find the limits. These are part of, of the uh, long list. Where is my long list from last time? This is absolutely mandatory. If I find the list, yes, here it is. So that's why I said it's, it's not infinite. But in here, we have to add now vertical and horizontal asymptotes, as well as slant. We were discussing the polynomial function. That's why we don't have asymptotes here. But we have to add this in for asymptotes. Does that answer your question? Is that was that the, your question? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes.